Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create a fixed floating element. Now before I explain um, what that is, a word from our sponsors. Who is actually me? I'm running a conference in uh, the south of England in Brighton on the 20th of November 2009. It's called Full Frontal. It's available on fullfrontal.org and uh, it's a one-day event focused around JavaScript and uh, it's uh, talks for beginners to intermediates um, on JavaScript. We've got a day of um, great speakers including Christian Harmon from Yahoo, uh, PPK who runs quirksmode.org and uh, Simon Willison from The Guardian along with others. So um, the tickets are available on the website. Uh, it's next month from now. Um, check it out, fullfrontal.org. Uh, it'd be great to see you come along. So, the uh, the fixed floating element, what exactly is that? So, I'm going to show you in Safari. So, I was looking at the, uh, the Mac website, and I'm pretty sure this has been on here for a while, um, and when I go into the shopping basket, this area over on the right-hand side when I scroll down, it remains fixed as to where it is. Now I've zoomed uh, the page out a little bit so it fits into the uh, the 800 by 600 screencast I have here. So that's why it's slightly um, jagged. But when I scroll down here, you'll notice the summary remains where it is, and it's pretty smooth as well. So I've seen this effect on other websites, but they haven't been quite as smooth as this. And um, I want to show you how to create that that effect. So let's jump into Firefox. Now Simon Willison, like I said, uh, one of our speakers, he has um, his his blog has this comments area on the right hand side, and when you scroll down, the comments stay with you. However, when you scroll, you can see it jumping a little bit, and when it's um, uh, if it happens smoothly, what what happens is it, you scroll down and um, the form catches up. Now I suspect there's some kind of timer going on in the background, just kind of working out whether or not it's been moved down. But it's it's not as smooth as the uh, the Apple website. So I wanted to show you how you could take this kind of layout and create the uh, the effect that we're after. So the way that Apple do it, I've closed it now. But um, the way that Apple are doing it is very simply: when the form is in this position, it's it's absolutely positioned, and when it's here, it has position fixed. So the one problem with that is it doesn't work in IE6 at all, um, which I think is fine because it's kind of a, an extra feature. But it depends on your client as well and what you're doing. If it's a personal project, then then you know if you're happy with not supporting IE6 on that one small feature, then that's great. If it's a professional project, then you need to kind of measure up um, your users and you know the impact, the the feature, and so on. But I just want to show you how to create that effect. So here is um, my markup. Now the one thing that I do have to do to to make this uh, style correctly is wrap it in a, another div, and this comment wrapper has position absolute and it and it places the actual element on the page. So I've mocked up um, a similar page to Simon's blog with uh, just a bit of lorem text in here, lorem Impson text, and here's the form. That I want to scroll down. So, I've also included this this marker at the top, this uh, this border one pixel. So, see where we have a twenty pixel margin at the top. That's the point. That that's the padding I want to include when I scroll down. So it's currently absolutely positioned, and if I switch that to fixed, when I scroll down, you can see it it, it stays in that position, and it includes the margin as well. So this effect is actually very easy to create. I think part of the job for for you guys is really styling it to to match exactly the um, the look that you want. Um, but you know we're focusing on the jQuery here, so uh, styling is down to you guys. So I'm going to include um, jQuery, and when the document is ready, I need to do a few things. Now. Um, I need to also create a new style. So what I'm going to do is say when the scroll bar hits this point, as soon as it hits the uh, the top point of this form, I'm going to add a class say uh, to, to tell this form to be position fixed. So 
comment. And I'm just going to give it top of zero. So at the moment, this position absolute. And now when I have position fixed, it stays there. So really, all I need to do is capture where this scroll bar is and then add the class and remove it once it um, goes past. So I need to bind a scroll event to the window. So when the window is scrolled, this function will run. So uh, I can I can I'll drop this out into the console. Okay. And what we want to work out is what the y position of the scroll is. whether that's below the form if so add the fixed class otherwise remove it so to get the y position we do var y equals um, window dot scroll top Let's log that out just to have a look at what it looks like. Yep, so at the top we have zero. So I'll just clear that. You'll see zero. And that number's increasing and decreasing. That's exactly what we need. Now we need to work out whether or not y is below the form. So y is um, greater than or equal to, so um, we've gone past it. And we had a comment dot position. Well typically you would use offset so yeah sorry uh, offset and then dot top. So offset dot top let me just show you that is the top position of this form. So let's have a look at this. Uh, 280 I think that's the right one. No it's not. Uh, I, well, that that's actually the value we want. So position uh, offset top. If it is greater than or equal to the offset top, then comment dot add class fixed. Else remove the class. So let's try that out. So that kind of half works. So let's have a look at why that half works. Um, oh, actually, I bet you this value is changing all the time. So 127 there, 59, right, it's because it's changing. So what we need to do is capture it on load to take the initial position of the top and then use that in our, in our test. So var. Um, top equals that. So, because we capture it when the document loads, this won't be changing when we move it around the page. So now let's try this. So that's working. So when I scroll past that point, it starts moving down. But you can see the little jump there. Yeah, so you can see what's happening is I'm I'm scrolling past the margin that we added to the uh, the div here. That that twenty pixel margin is getting scrolled past, and then we're hitting that top point, and then it's jumping down. So let's include the margin in our um, uh, top position. So uh, comment dot css margin top. Let's give that another try. That didn't work at all. Why didn't that work? OK, 
Okay, so that's not working at all. And what I would do is check out what that value is now, top nan, which means not a number, which means I've subtracted something that isn't really a number. So let's have a look at what I've subtracted. 20px. So I actually need to convert that to a number. So I'm going to do parse float. And that strips out the text and gives us a number. So now we have a number. Scroll down. Now you see it includes that, that margin. So that, that works perfectly. However, I also know that in IE, if there isn't a margin top, this will become the word auto. And if we try and do a parse float on the word auto, Uh, firebug explodes. Okay, fire, fire, firebug has messed up. Yeah, so pass float on the word auto is not a number. So what I'm going to do here as well is replace auto. So I'm going to replace the word auto with the number zero. Okay, so let me just show you what that looks like if I uh, if I pop it into an alert box, dot replace, auto, zero. Missing a bracket. Dot replace. Oh, sorry. Put the replace on replace. Um, it goes there because we're working on the string. Auto, zero. Oh, man. Open, close, close, close. There you go. Right, that's what we're looking for, a zero. So, like I said, i.e., if there's um, if there's no margin, it will say it will say auto. So we want to make sure that that doesn't convert into uh, uh, not a number. So that's the important thing. If you're you're playing around with this and it doesn't work, have a look at what this value is here, top, and just drop it into the console. And uh, that's it. That's literally all the code you need. So refresh that. Scroll down. Super smooth. And what we can do in this block of code is um, just wrap it in if dollar browser um, is it dot browser dot sorry I'm going to have to refer to the doc the the API doc um, and we want to do version is uh, greater than six. Oh, basically, we want to say if not IE. So var uh, msie6 equals dollar browser oh, it's just dollar browser. Okay, dollar browser is equal to msie and dollar browser dot version is less than 7 and if that's not true, if not MSIE6, then do this lot. But to be fair, um, because flix, fixed isn't supported at all, it doesn't make any difference when it runs. But this just protects it from uh, running in IE6. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, um, pop up a, um, a comment on jQuery for designers. And thanks for watching.